Buenas tardes a todos. Es un lujo eh, estar aquí con vosotros, pero me creo que me estoy equivocando de lengua. <laughs> well, for me, it is a great, great pleasure. It's like a dream being here at the Spanish uh, consulate or the summer house of the Spanish embassy in Istanbul to introduce an association that we call in Spain Women in Gastronomy. Women in Gastronomy. We started the association three years ago and uh, now after having a lot of things happen in the association, we have reached to achieve a great group in Spain, really big, really big. And we know now that this was a need. We thought it was a need at the beginning, but now we are convinced because when you get together, you get bigger and you get stronger and we help each other a lot. When I spoke to, uh, well, first of all, I have to say I am Maria Jose San Roman. I am chef and co-owner of a group of restaurants in Alicante, Spain. And I met with my friends, girls, uh, like three years ago in my restaurant to talk about, well, we were having a party, in fact. It wasn't a meeting for talking about women, but at the end of the lunch, we were like 85% women in that meeting. And we thought, what happened with women? Why we are not in the media? Why we are not shown? Why they don't see us? And that was the beginning of uh, a thinking. There was a lot of journalists in this group and they were the ones that helped us to develop. And they, we decided, why don't we get together and make a group? And that was the beginning. It's a lot to talk about this but this is the past. The thing is after the time we reached to do a legal association, non-profit, with women not only from the kitchen, but from the service, from the sommelier, from the producers. We have also producers of anything that has to see with the gastronomy. And we also have men. It's an association with human beings. Men are with us, we need men. Men need women, and together we are much better. We, we get more talent than only male or only female. Do you agree? That's why the reason we are here together. Spanish Embassy gave us the support to meet with uh, people from the gastronomy in Turkey. So I met Eileen last year, and we decided we have to make it. I mean, I met a few Eileens, and some other chefs that are not here today, but that we know, and we already started a little group called Women in Gastronomy Turkey. It was like a dream uh, a year ago, and now here we are planting a seed that I hope it will grow with you. You have to make your own way. We will give you our tools. You are like, uh, like uh, this is, uh, like, um, how do you call when you make a McDonald's and another one? <laughs> A chain. This is a chain because we are international. We don't want to stop helping people from anywhere in the world. Women has to show because gender, talent has no gender. It's human beings. We are all human beings. That's, uh, this is going to be our first like kind of delegation, which means you have friends now in Spain shaking hands with you, helping you, we can maybe do uh, exchanges of women chefs that want to learn in Spain through the Spanish support, that they will get a visa to come and learn how to develop a business and see another point of view. Because the fact is, in Spain, 55% of the gastronomy is run by women and only a 10% are on the roof. Michelin star, sons from Repsol, uh, only 10%, which means we are not there. We just work, we just work. Uh, Maria is an example. She is uh, the responsible of Women in Gastronomy in Madrid, which Madrid is huge. And she's making a revolution there with women that nobody knew before, and we put them in the uh, scenario. Uh, it's, it's only a year that we start Madrid, and now... No, no yet. Not yet. Seven months. Okay, it's not a baby yet, but how is going Madrid? Like, it's a revolution. Yeah, it's, it's they get together. Very, very fast. 
Because yeah. We need something like this in Madrid. Yeah. I mean, there is many, many women uh, working on gastronomy and many, many women without voice. So they want to have their own voice. And we are very, and we have a huge support from with from from men too. So they, they, they feel the same that we need the support and they wanted to give it to us. So that is very interesting and very and very I mean like uh, encouraging. Yeah, encouraging. So that's the reason why we are here today. So I think Eileen is very much qualified and she believes deeply in women and, and in this group. Yes. And I think you should start uh, growing this group in uh, Turkey with, of course, the help of Spanish uh, MEG and the Spanish embassy support, which could be, I don't know, <laughs> but you have to call and then maybe you will get an answer. Definitely. Don't, I mean, if you believe, you have to do it. I mean, I, when I really think of something, then you create. But you don't have to stop believing that we can make anything. We always believe we don't do enough. We need to do more. We need, we need to prove more. But we don't realize how good we are and how good we can be. We just need freedom, space of freedom to do whatever we like to do. Yes. So I would like to know your... What do you think about this? I'm, I'm delighted Made to it? be here. Wait. Thank you. Eileen, uh, what is your name? What do you do? <laughs> well, my, my name is Eileen Yazıcıoğlu. Uh, I'm a consultant chef uh, for the time being. And um, I'm very delighted to be here. I, I, we, we met uh, last year and uh, it was like a dream. And now today is uh, the dream uh, coming true. Um, obviously, I'm only representing um, my, my uh, colleagues here, and um, it's a huge responsibility. Uh, I just want to share um, one anecdote. Um, what, a few years ago, uh, I was interviewing a young lady, very talented, and um, graduated with uh, probably the best degree uh, from her school. And um, I was asking her, so what's your plan for the future? Um, you know, had there been a, um, so, so something, um, if I were to tell you, okay, you, you'll have it today, what would be your biggest dream? And uh, with her eyes shining, she was telling, um, I'd love to be a great uh, sous chef. <laughs> exactly, I laughed, you know, why not a chef? She couldn't even imagine in her wildest dreams that she could be number one. Uh, obviously, we have a long way to go now because um, working situation is very hard in uh, the restoration, the um, gastronomy uh, sector is quite hard and um, there are a lot of uh, troubles for um, young women to take part in it. And we have to fight against all this because they can do it as well as men can do it. And uh, we'll fight together, men and women, hand in hand. I know you believe in, in what you are doing, and I, I think this is going to be the beginning of a great story in women in gastronomy in Turkey. Yes. I really am enchanted to be part of, uh, I mean, to meet you, because when we met, yes. I thought you are the one, Thank because you. you really believe, Thank and you. you are going to encourage other women. Not to be a sous chef, but a number one chef of the yes. world. Why not? That's what we need. <laughs> yes. Number one on, on anything we want to do. So I want to tell you who are my partners here. Mimud. Mimud is um, Mimud is a chef from Spain, but she is now in Turkey, which is going to be like the the fusion between Spain and Turkey. She works uh, as a chef, and she's not. She doesn't speak fluent English, but she's going to tell us what she is doing, how was her life, like a testimony, and I will be translating. Is that okay? Okay. Yo soy chef desde hace unos 15 años. Como ha dicho bien María José antes, esto no hablemos mucho del pasado, porque lo que queremos crear es un presente y sobre todo un futuro. Un futuro para las jóvenes eh, chef, 
She's a chef for 15 years, and she doesn't want to talk about the past. She wants to talk about the future, because we have the future. Todas las eh, mujeres que estamos aquí y que hemos trabajado muy duramente en la, en la cocina sabemos que, que la cocina siempre ha sido un mundo de hombres, un mundo además muy competitivo donde las mujeres estábamos relegadas a, a ciertos trabajos, ¿no? De, pues, muchas veces yo con compañeras de limpieza no te dejaban, bueno, como ha dicho Eileen, a lo más que podías llegar era ser subchef y su, ser subchef ya era una, una, una gran, eh, un gran logro, ¿no? Yo veo con mucha alegría como desde hace unos años hay es, esa potente eh, fuerza de estas jóvenes que, que entran en la cocina, que no se dejan pisotear y que, y que, y que suben y suben rápidamente porque, porque tienen talento, porque el talento no tiene sexo, el talento es el talento. A mí me encantaría que, que en Turquía, que al, al igual que en España, eh, pasase lo mismo, que, que Aileen se, se animara, hiciéramos una asociación de mujeres para dar cabida a todas esas mujeres jóvenes que, que, que se lo merecen y que necesitan ese empuje. Um, she thinks during the time she's been in the kitchen, women were not supposed to be part of the big team. They were just in the washing or in the the most they could think about was su chef again. But life has changed a lot. You see young people that really believe in what they want to do and she believes the association will be a good idea for them to be part of the group and be able to do whatever they want because they will have the freedom to do it. So, Lorena, uh, well, we can maybe talk after all together, mm -hmm. but uh, Lorena, she represents uh, sommelier. She's sommelier in my restaurant and um, also, we need the service. So many women serving in all restaurants. And uh, maybe she has something to tell about her expertise, what she's doing. Did you have any problems? She's from Mexico, she speaks English, and she works in Spain. So Lorena, you can tell us a bit about your situation being a woman in Spain and encourage Turkish women to see that you can do whatever you want to do because she's like number one in Spain. She's one of the best sommelier in, in the world. Thank you very much. Well, I'm from Mexico. I, I, I began in the kitchen, but finally I finished in service because I love the world of wine. And it's true that uh, 15 years ago in Mexico, I don't have that possibility. But uh, that's the reason that I decided to stay in, uh, in Spain. And I think I met Maria Jose 12 years ago. And we have a beautiful project. Uh, it's true that the problem of uh, the image that uh, women have, it's not only in the kitchen. We have it in the service too. Uh, now, uh, when I try to explain my uh, pairings, uh, many, many, Many people tell me that, oh, uh, we want to talk with the sommelier. And I say, yes, I'm the sommelier, no? And many, many times they say, oh, you are a woman. Uh, yes, of course. <laughs> Why not, no? Uh, so I think it's a uh, very hard work, but uh, it's very interesting uh, day by day to, um, to share our mind so we can we can do it better uh, day, by, day by day. So we also have Maria Eugenia. Jenny, she is uh, my daughter, and she came because she's running the biggest and the most successful restaurant in Alicante, which is Taberna del Gourmet. She's in charge of a big group of uh, people working there, almost a hundred. And she's also a woman, and she never had a problem in, the, in doing that, did you? No. Um, she, uh, <laughs> hello, everybody. Well, I, I think that we didn't talk about one of the most important things here is it's not easy to work in gastronomy if you're a mother. I have three kids, and it's very difficult to, uh, to work and to be a mother because you know that in gastronomy you have to work weekends, you have to work in holidays, and we need help from the government and from everywhere uh, to help us uh, to, you know, uh, have um, um, support 
thank you. <laughs> because uh, it's not easy, you know. Sometimes uh, I think one of the most difficult that we have is because we are mothers, and we need to break this problem. You know what I mean? And I think um, we have to work in that. And for the rest, I, I don't used to have problems uh, in my work because I'm a woman and I don't have never problems, sorry. But uh, it's I think easy. it's not easy to, to, be a mother. to be a mother and to be a gastronomy work, okay? Well, we also have here a very successful woman who is a chef in London. Ulia, you have to come here and sit with us because we need you to talk how you can be oh, coming late i was going to get away but i'm not getting here. away here squeezing in olia hi is it okay yes. you have to say who hi. you are and okay. what do you do and what was your challenge how did you reach to be the most successful turkish women in the kitchen With outside the turkey that's really you've been very nice. Um, <laughs> I, I I think that you have to be a it's a little bit of exaggeration. So, <laughs> my name is Julia Pierce. Um, actually, our restaurants are not in London, very close to London, but we are based in an area called Hertfordshire. Um, we have three restaurants, over sixty people working in our small restaurants in three different locations, and I think it has been very challenging to be a woman in gastronomy for the many reasons. I'm sorry I missed some parts of it, but I've just caught what Jenny was saying. I'm a mother myself. And like you were saying, school holidays and also as mothers, as not just children, you know, we are responsible looking after the homes and sometimes our own parents and to trying to balance that, it's really, really difficult. How did we manage to be successful? That's you being very kind. Um, it's really hard. I think I'm working in prominently all male environment. Um, in the kitchen is myself and one other chef, the female, and all our other chefs are all male. I always feel we have to work double harder to prove ourselves mm -hmm. or prove our worth that we are as good as the male counterparts. But groups like this, and hopefully us talking about it more um, is going to raise our profile and we're going to work together to make sure that we get the recognition that we deserve. Of course we will. <laughs> Thank, we you. Will. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Maria, do you want to add something? Well, I was thinking just like you, uh, just what you said, that is very, very important. There's something very, um, I mean, there is no, that I, that I hate when I go to any kitchen, for example, during the pandemic, I went uh, with uh, Jose Andres to our central kitchen for cooking. And when I arrived, they asked me, what are you coming for? I say, I'm out for cooking. Say, so I, uh, the, the, my, I was like surprised that why men were asking me if I was there for cooking, not for cleaning or for another thing. Well, I'm a chef like you. And they asked me, no, you know, the first day I work, twice that they work, just for, to, to demonstrate myself at them that I was very good on my work. And it's my work, and I know that I am very good. So why do I have to be good for them? I, has to be, I, I, I must be good for myself, not for the others. So they must understand that we are very good. And... If we, want, if we love what we do, we are going to be the best. Because when you love uh, what you do, you can manage with your home, with your children, with everything. But the thing is that here we think that we are always leaving our, you know, our uh, kids and our home because of our work. And it's not true because it's a father and it's some other people, I mean some other uh, related yes. Yes. that can take care of them and if because I mean when I we have many 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 meetings I, I am women's in gastronomy in Madrid mm -hmm. and we had many meetings and all the chefs and uh, sommeliers and the what they ask is but 
Don't you feel that you are leaving your family in a second place when and your and your work is the first thing to do? And I say no, you are not. You are not. You are doing the the best thing that you you are doing is to be uh, ha to be uh, happy. And if you are happy, you will make happy your family. If you are sad, you will be make sad your family. So it's very, very important that to be happy, to be uh, very, 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 um, you know, challenge, and you don't have to prove anything. You are the best. So that's it. So let's go and let's go on. And just to be in this kind of groups is very good, but sometimes you don't need to prove anything. To, to, the only thing you need is somebody to say, you have the best, what are you talking about? Just don't think about it and keep on doing. Well, I don't want to make this too long because we have a lot of things to do, we have to work, but I believe when we have uh, women, we have a um, father, we have father, mother, we are, um, 50% of being mothers, you know, we need help from our partners. We, we don't have to support everything. So we, we need to have uh, questions if you need to, to ask something. And uh, of course, we have to announce that the association, the web page has been translated into Turkish today, today. and okay. English. So you can use our web as much as you like and you can do what, how many changes you need to do. But I think we are on the way, we have to start working, and if you want to know more, you, ha you just have to go to the webpage asociacionmec.es and learn more about us. Pues preguntas. Good afternoon or good evening. <laughs> I would like to ask you, when Maria Jose, when you started, you know, with the with the restaurant, what was what was your aim at the beginning? What do you, what do you want it? Do you want it to create something? Do you want to create a concept, or do you want just to do you did for hobby or for for what? What you remember those years? Yes, yes, I remember, I remember. <laughs> Well, I am uh, from a very an uh, old generation. You are all very young. I'm the oldest. I'm, I'm the oldest. So I belong. I, I, I belong to another club. You know, when I when I when I got married, I was a mother, a wife, and a housewife. I was studying law, law and I stopped studying, and I just became a mother and a housewife. But we we were in the business of the gastronomy and we want to become better in the business. And my husband knew that I cook very well at home, so why don't we, why don't we go to the business and start working inside? I always have the support of my husband. He was the one that believed the most in what I, I was doing. And he pushed me all the time, you can do it, you can make it, you are number one, you are the best, you cook so good. So he was challenging me, and I always want to be the best. I mean, I don't have a problem. I never had a problem being a woman, that is why I feel I can help. Because mm -hmm. for me, it was a great opportunity to work in our kitchens, we were the, we were the owners. I didn't have any, any problems. I was dreaming, doing what I like. So for me, it wasn't a problem. And I just want to tell people, they, they have to believe, and when you create, when, when you think, in Spain, in Spanish, you, say, you think, when you create, when you lo crees, lo creas. So when you believe, you can create. But first, you have to believe you can do it. So for me, not a problem at all. I was being very well treated, and I really feel I, 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 I can help. Uh, well, your energy and your belief will, I think, succeed in everything because you're, you are like a power bomb. The last time you came to Istanbul, you gathered us all and, you know, we ended up dining at your house and, you know, everything. 
went uh, so uh, like a storm, I would say. Um, in the during the pandemic, we had a boom of women's cooperatives in uh, Turkey. Uh, so uh, it was very encouraging because lots of the people working in the agriculture sector are women, and they managed to sell their products and sometimes home products as well, like pasta or uh, confiture or jams and preserves reserves and anything, there has been a boom and they are doing very well now because it's a direct contact with the uh, consumer from the producer. I think women chefs can share their experiences and especially women chefs can support the women producers and maybe we can even share the know-hows or experiences between the countries because what you are building is like a network of countries. So you are on the other side of the um, um, Mediterranean, we are on this side of the Mediterranean, so there will be like a bridge. But I think we can also share our um, mutual concerns, our obstacles, and also the success stories, so that they can be the women producers, even in a tiny village, can be inspired maybe from a Spanish woman producer that has a success story in herding goats or making a cheese or anything, or collecting zafferano. <laughs> Uh, we are going working on making a network to put in contact producers and chefs. That's running and it's going to be in a few months. Uh, this can also be a share and which you can use it. It will be a network like um, Instagram and you say I need carrots and I want that kind of carrots. You put it in the, in the application and you will see what you have around. And uh, this is going to be happening very, very soon in Spain. And then you can also copy paste. I want to say that we have here Maria Luisa Guillén, which is one of our sponsors in Spain. We need a little money because this is a non-profit association. We don't charge partners to be a partner. Everybody can be a partner. When you are not a chef, then when you go to the registration, they stop you. But you can be a fan and you can help, you know, but you can get there. And you can go as far as you your work. If you are a producer, you will go with the producers, with the wine, with the service, mm -hmm. or a chef. Mm -hmm. So press. press also is there. We need uh, press. Relations in gastronomy. Yes. Um, influencers. Yes. Uh, we have um, producers. Uh, we have, uh, I mean, sellers of gas. I mean. Um, um, gourmet um, producers or good gourmet importation. We have many, many, many different types. Yeah, it's, it's really, it's really it can be really huge. But we need a little money to support ourselves. We don't need a lot of money because we don't need to sell our soul to nobody. But we need little sponsor. And Maria Lisa, Luisa is one of our sponsors in Alicante. We, we also have uh, San Miguel, which is a beer company. They don't give us a lot of money, but enough to have uh, somebody answering the emails and putting things together and cleaning the house, you know? Because we are all very busy. And if we don't have the possibility of having someone working for us, then the miracle will never happen. We need, we need the manager. We need the manager, professional manager, and we need the money. We need the money for <laughs> Turkey to support these little uh, expenses we, we need uh, to do. Or otherwise, it's very difficult to assist. So thank you, Maria Luisa. Thank you for being here. Yeah, she's a... There's a question Yeah? Another question. Well, it's actually two questions uh, from Spanish Media EFE. Uh, one is from Maria Jose. Uh, you said your woman in gastronomy is already or has planned to expand to, to other countries too, you said, but it will be the first. Can you elaborate a little bit more on these plans to get international? And then to Eileen and um, Julia, uh, do you have uh, already specific plans to um, set up this Turkish association? Would it be an association, a foundation, or do you have already plans when it could be running? Any details you can give me would be great. Thank you. 
as soon as possible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> please well, go ahead. Uh, please. You, are you have well, so much more information. <laughs> I mean, from my point of view, obviously, I'm quite new. I've been living in the UK for the last 22, 23 years. Um, but we do employ lots of Turkish people in the UK. I am extremely passionate about Turkey and I'm one of the maybe the reasons that I left Turkey many many years ago I felt maybe as woman that I did not have as much as opportunities that I hoped for myself and I see for many younger people finishing different gastronomy schools women um, leaving and I would love to be able to part of something that would allow them to have better opportunities in Turkey at the end of the day, our goal is ultimately the same. We love our country and we want to be able to create something and inspire people to follow through, no? But I'm sure you have much more experience to talk about in Turkey for me than, than no. myself. <laughs> no. Um, well, as soon as possible is the answer. Yesterday is the need. Mm -hmm. um, but um, we, we, sh we should get together. That's for certain. I mean, that's really repeating uh, the obvious. Um, we should get together at the national level to start with and so happy that we can be part of the international um, sort of group of um, similar kind of um, mindsets, not uh, necessarily um, talking about male or um, female uh, mindsets, but um, it's, it's a difficult sector and um, we have to work together to be success, successful, um, to, well, as you said, uh, we start this uh, work to be happy, to realize ourselves, and uh, at the end of the day, it becomes a burden. It shouldn't be. We, we, we started uh, doing this because we wanted to cook, and uh, it shouldn't be that difficult. So we have to, as I say, I think, um, I love, uh, I, I used to th just say work, but now I've, prefer the word fighting because the world has become such a place we need to fight for our human rights. Thank you. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to answer you about the international uh, <laughs> set up, which is start here legally in Turkey, but Mexico is next, India, London, Paris, Ecuador, Brazil, <laughs> Colombia, I mean, everywhere I go, and I talk about, I'm going very often to cook around the world, and no matter what I do in the kitchen, when I talk about the association, nobody asks me for the food anymore. Everybody's talking about the association. That's what I, I think, if I can be the voice, if I can be a help in India, in Turkey, in China, whenever, I'm ready to go. Because this is my challenge now, to give the opportunity to other people to do so. And it's not Spanish or Turkish, it's international. So what is the most international thing? We have embassies. And now we are in the umbrella of the Spanish embassy that believe on this need. And maybe, hopefully, Spanish embassy is going to do so in other countries. We are ready to travel. <laughs> and we? Yes. Te contesta? I any more questions? No tiene más? Bueno, pues, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Eh, uh, Aileen, <laughs> we have a lot of work to do. Oh, yes. <laughs> and we are going to meet a lot. Oh, yes. eh? You have to come to Spain and we have to organize the big exposition, exhibition of the uh, Turkish uh, women in gastronomy. It can be held, uh, like, uh, soon. Yesterday, hopefully. hopefully, but you you are in charge. This, this is this is the this this is the beauty of this um, um, association, I think, because until now it was all talk, 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 and now it's action, and we want to see um, young, talented people traveling, learning from uh, their counterparts. In other words, because uh, it's it's we, we can't just stay in our little shell now. We have to break through and um, go. And I'll be. When we first talk about your project that young, talented women from Turkey can travel to Spain with their work visa 
and learn the language, learn their trades. Um, it can be in Spain, it can be anywhere else soon in the world, let's say, and then uh, sort of, you know, enlarge their um, world and bring it back to wherever they're coming from. This is, I think, what makes you, you know, motivated and hopeful for the future. Thank you. We'll make it. <laughs> we'll make it. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you, much for attending. And uh, looking forward to this big party we're going to make oh, yes. soon. Okay? <laughs> Thank you. Gracias. Gracias. <laughs>